Okay guys, in this problem we have two identical 12-inch concrete sewers that are installed at a 2% slope and flow into a junction manhole. Here, their flows join and are carried downstream by a single sewer, also of the same size as the others. What slope does the downstream sewer need to have in order to convey the full flows from both upstream sewers? Does the velocity in this sewer exceed the minimum velocity of 2.5 feet per second needed to prevent sedimentation and fall below 15 feet per second to prevent scour? So the first thing we need to recognize to solve this problem is that we're using Manning's equation. Our reference manual will give us the equation and we can see in it that Q for flow equals 1.49 over Manning's N area, hydraulic radius raised to the two thirds, slope raised to the one half. So that is Manning's. If we compare the flow in both of the twin 12 inch concrete sewers at slope of 2% with another form of Manning's for the other sewer, whose slope we don't know yet, we can back calculate to solve for the slope. So the way we can do this is step one here will be 1.49 over N, A, R to the two thirds, S to the one half, times two for both of the sewers flow, will equal the sewer on the other side of the junction manhole. And if we'd like, we can simplify this down. So we know that the sewers are all 12 inches as it specifies in the problem. 1.49 over N is going to be the same thing as well. And even our area over our wetted perimeter should be the same if we're assuming full flow here. So really this whole problem can simplify down pretty quickly to simply, we can write this out a little more if it, to explain it. Remember that hydraulic radius is area over wetted perimeter. In the interest of time on the test, you probably don't need to write all this out, but we're here to learn. So, area over what a perimeter to the two thirds, slope two to the one half, and that was slope one. So that's the only thing that's different. So, what we're going to get down to here is slope one times two equals slope two square root. And that's just by simplifying down this original step here. So if we were to plug in the sloped value of 2% expressed as a decimal, we can solve this out now. And just like that, we can determine that the slope of the downstream pipe is 8%. So we know the answer is going to be one of these two. However, we can continue to check that now simply by plugging in the equations back into Manning's with our new known slope and figuring out what our velocity is. So instead of using the first full term here for Manning's, we can remove the area and simply solve for velocity here instead. So we can say V equals 1.49 over N area over wetted perimeter to the two thirds slope to the one half and filling this out some more 
the Mannings N is going to be 0 0.013 for concrete. Uh, I'm not actually sure if that's in the manual or not. Usually it'll be given if you need it though. And then the area of a circle, I'll write up here real fast. That's going to be pi d squared over 4. So in this case, that's going to be 3.14 times 1 foot squared over 4. And that gives us 0 0.785 square feet. And the perimeter. The wetted perimeter in this case is just going to be pi d. So that's going to be 3.14 times 1 foot gives us 3.14 feet. You might even have that one memorized if you've done a lot of problems already using circular pipes. So I did that up here just so we can simplify what we're writing out down here. This is 0 0.0785 feet squared over 3.14 feet. And all of that is to the two thirds. And our slope that we just solved for is 0 0.08 to the one half. And if we solve this out in chunks, you don't have to. But again, if you're working on a calculator that isn't easy to move around in. Sometimes it takes a little more time, but I do these in chunks just to check my work on the way. And if we solve out for all of that, we will get 12.86 feet per second. So yes, that also falls between 15 and 2.5. It's up there, but it's not quite above it. So I would say in this problem, it's a slope of 8% and a velocity that falls within the range. So yes, and that's all it takes to solve this problem.